started working for Rally in 1972, Mark II, 1972. And during that time, uh, in total, I did 27 years at Rally. Most of the, that time, the first 23 years, Rally was a manufacturer. The products were manufactured in, uh, in Nottingham. In terms of the chopper, it was all done before, before I even joined the company. So 1972, we're already, the company was already at Mark, uh, Mark II stage. The experience of working on a site that was 40 acres, I think we had about, at that time, over 10,000 people on, on the site. So you're talking about Rally and, and Sturmey Archer. And the place just hummed. I mean, it was so big, people could just disappear for the day. You know, I'm going to see a friend in so-and-so, you know, and, and you, you, get on the, you get on the office bike, which if you were lucky was a chopper, and off you went to see your mate, sort your job out, and come back at tea time sort of thing. You know, I mean, it was huge. So yeah, it was quite an exciting place. <laughs> Design and development of any product at Rally it wasn't just one person, it, it was a whole team. And so there's a document rec recently come out that, that, that indicates the, the people in, who were responsible for the patent in America. Uh, one was Tom Caron, one was um, a guy called John Gordon, who legend has it, and this is, this is fr coming from designers who all talk about designers and who was responsible. He, was, he allegedly was the guy that did a lot of the detail work on the UK and American chopper right, right at the start. So there was him, he, his name's on the patent, uh, which is for frames and forks. And then the, the, another guy who was um, a technical manager, in fact, I worked for him for a while, uh, Harry Leatherland. Um, but those two rally guys both work for Alan Oakley, so that's, that's, the, that's the connection there with, with Alan Oakley. Most of the parts on that bicycle were actually manufactured in Nottingham. The, the, the few things on there that, that weren't manufactured, in, 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 certainly in the UK, were generally chain and tyres. Other things, you know, as, as time went on, were resourced either from, from, uh, from the Far East or wherever, but essentially it was a UK Nottingham produced product. When you look at the ones um, that were pre produced for America, uh, they had really high sissy bars and backrests and it became to the fore that, that there were problems with the bike in, in, in the, from a user's point of view that they were quite easy to um, tip up because kids love doing wheelies even, even, even in those days and so the Mark II utilised uh, several, several modifications that helped to bring the rider further forward and that was achieved by changing the, uh, the seat stay to putting the, the curve in it, moving it forward, putting a curve in it away from the uh, rear axle. It's a shorter seat so two people, it was more difficult for two people to get on it. And subsequently the, the adjustment in the, in, the, in the handlebar, so you couldn't move the handlebar backwards and forwards. It was in a fixed position so that helped improve the uh, safety of it. I think by the end of 1972, so the, the Mark II had been in production effectively a year, they had by then produced um, 375,000 units, which is a hell of a lot. And ultimately it ended up, I think, 1.5 million choppers were made. I mean, the thing about a, a child's bike is it, it gets you away from your parents, doesn't it? It gets you with your mates, you know, you, you, it's that sort of level of the level of independence that that, that, that people remember and, and revere, really. As we were looking earlier at some of the more recent uh, replicas that have that have been done, this is just knocks the socks off them. And it's got all the level of detail in there that that, that, that really make it make it different. Particularly the the detail in the in the head tube and seat tube where where, where the main tube fits. How you managed to uh, replicate the fishtail, the the, the brazing uh, braised construction. This obviously is not braised, but but it, it, it gives you that it gives you that Im impression. The three speed the, the the gear change is amazing. I mean that was taken off of uh, the subsequent uh, replicas mainly because through through safety standards because it was seen as being you know dangerous and not but the. The regulations have changed and you've managed to uh, find the opportunity to reproduce it and what a marvellous job you've done of it because it's not, it's quite complex in there, a piece of engineering to, to, to change, uh, change, change the gear. Clearly the sissy bar is, which is the backrest, the backrest tube, we all call it sissy bar. That's obviously a, a modest one, but no, the detail's excellent and the pedals, uh, 
lovely. The head, head badge is all as it should be. It's absolutely lovely, it really is. So I think the enthusiasts are going to be, knock, it'll knock the socks off. And a lot of fun for people, hopefully. A lot of dads are going to be happy, I think.